This is KGW News at 11. Oh my God! Look over there! You guys, get down! Get down! Yeah, suffice it to say, crazy weather across the Portland metro area tonight, in some cases causing damage, like those tree limbs there that caught on camera came smashing into a car in northeast Portland. Tons of you tonight are sending us your photos and your videos of what you saw outside during this storm. In fact, take a look at this photo in particular showing marble sized hail in the Hollywood district. We have KGW team coverage tonight, so let's start with Tim Gordon live in that northeast Portland neighborhood where some trees and limbs were were knocked down, Tim. Yeah, Maggie, this is where we found the worst of it. The wind really moved through here. Uh, people say it happened so fast, bringing down trees like this one and branches too, but there was a lot of weather action in other places as well. All across the Portland metro area, a wild combination of weather, rainbows and lightning. All at once, the storms rotated above in a stormy dark stew. <laughs> wow. It unleashed big hail in Park Rose Heights and Maywood Park, just to name a few spots. And it appears lightning struck this tree in Vancouver as well. And I parked the car and, and uh, looked and I went, oh my, this is something happened here. But nowhere did we find more concentrated damage than just off Gleason in the area of Northeast 63rd. At least a half dozen neighbors had trees blown down or branches ripped off by strong winds. Limbs from a big tree took out Ron Martin's hawthorn berry tree. He saw it happen, checking the weather from his front porch. And then the wind just came up within seconds, and it just blew the tree over, and then it was gone. It was crazy. And around the corner, the most severe damage, big tree branches strewn everywhere. We saw it from the beginning to the end. The clouds got really dark. Nina Smith was home with her mom and baby, and the home surveillance cameras were rolling. And no sooner did we turn around and start looking at the cameras, and there was just wind and branches and all of it coming towards our house. It was scary. My adrenaline started rushing. I'm like grabbing my baby. My mom's yelling, get away from the windows. And I'm just like, what do we do? What do you do in that moment? It was over like that. And when they went outside, man, was there a lot. I was like, my car, mom's car. We walked towards mom's a little bit more and we're like, oh, mom's car. A fast moving storm. They'll never, ever forget. Well, the National Weather Service came out and surveyed this area, say there was no tornado, but I guess this is proof it doesn't take one to do some damage. Maggie, back to you. Yeah, for sure. Tim Gordon, live for us. Tim, thank you. Let's go now to Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino with a look at what we're seeing now. Hey, Matt. Hey, Maggie, that's right. Things have really calmed down tonight. We had some breaks in the clouds, but I tell you what, it was an impressive storm. I shot this picture down in Tualatin before the thunderstorms rolled on in, and the lighting was amazing because it was sunny, but those big black clouds were coming. Then you could hear the thunder and the lightning came and the very, very heavy rain as well. So it was indeed a really wild afternoon. Now here's radar. I'm stopping this at 430 when those storms are hitting the east side of Portland. And you can see the heavy rainfall that came with it too. And a lot of lightning Maywood Park down throughout the east side there. The thunderstorms continue to move on down to the south and west. And that was one thing that was unusual about these storms as they moved from northeast to the southwest. That's not the way our storms usually go. So it was a little bit different in that regard. And then they basically dissipated after that. In fact, right now, there's not much of any precipitation falling around Oregon at this time. Couple of lightning strikes down off the southern Oregon coast. There is this batch of snow up around Mount St. Helens. That's going to be moving our way. And speaking of snow, Boy, was it ever snowy in the Cascades tonight. This is Timberline right now. It's only 27 degrees. There was nine inches of new snow up there in the last 24 hours. That's a Timberline. There was a band of heavy snow that set up and actually made it accumulate in the passes too. Now, the picture from uh, ODOT from Government Camp is missing right now, but look at Sandy Ann Pass. You can see the snowfall on the side of the road, snow falling, and the road is black, which is good, meaning that it's melted off. It's only about 31 degrees there, but down south at Willamette Pass, again, snow in the air, snow in the side of the roads, but the roads mainly still just clear. However, it's 29 degrees there, so 
it is cold enough and I think we will see some more snow in the Cascades. So the headlines look like this cool scattered showers tomorrow, but no thunderstorms. I think we'll be free from that. Get a couple of sun breaks. Temperatures already in the 40s right now. Snow showers continuing into the Cascades the tune another two to six inches depending on how the showers line up and then it clears off and that means frost in the valleys on Monday and a hard freeze for the gorge and the mountains. More on the wild weather later, guys. Back to you. All right, Matt, really appreciate it. Hey, we're going to piggyback off of that. Check out these photos of the winter wonderland that Matt talked about in the mountains. Again, these are from Mount Hood Meadows, specifically fresh snow fell, as Matt said, in the mountains and the passes overnight making for gorgeous photos. You can stay on top of all the latest weather conditions in our area, be it storms or snow, by downloading the KGW app. Moving on tonight, new information on a crash that shut down some streets in northeast Portland today. Police say the motorcyclist involved has died, and they haven't released his name at this point. This happened around 4 this afternoon at the intersection of Halsey Street and 79th Avenue. All roads in that area are back open, and police say the other driver involved in that crash is cooperating. The M Hill County Sheriff's Office, meanwhile, is investigating an officer involved shooting after deputies say a driver tried to run them over. This happened last night in Lafayette. Two deputies spotted a car in a cemetery on Dunaway Road, and they say there was a man and a woman inside that car. Suddenly, say the, they say the car sped off, almost hitting one of the deputies, and that's when the other one fired a single shot. Neither deputy was hurt. They later found the car nearby in a neighborhood, but no one was inside. Both both deputies are on administrative leave during that investigation. Well, the boycott is over for shoppers at Fred Meyer stores. The union representing grocery workers has now reached a tentative agreement after some very tense contract negotiations. In fact, for more than 15 months, as we've been covering, the UFCW Local 555 was trying to negotiate better pay with the region's biggest grocers. In the case of Fred Meyer, the union claimed there was a gender wage gap that needed to be fixed. Fred Meyer denied that claim, and the union now says its main concerns have been addressed with this tentative agreement. I was trying to avoid Fred Myers while the boycott was on, and uh, I really needed to go shopping today, so I, if it was still on, I was going to have to, you know, dishonor the boycott, but I'm glad it's over and it's okay to shop. Yeah, some happy shoppers out there day, today. So again, this is a tentative deal. The details of it aren't being released until union workers vote on it. And actually, that was one of two union agreements reached today. Employees at Oregon Public Universities have also reached a tentative deal on a new contract, avoiding a possible strike. This comes after months of negotiations and a strike authorization from that union. It feels fantastic. I mean, we've fought so, uh, so hard and for such a long time. We started these negotiations in February and, um, uh, you know, it's been an uphill struggle. The union says the new contract includes the largest cost of living adjustment in more than a decade. They're trying to stop me because I'm fighting for you. Turning now to national news and President Trump is on the defense this weekend amid fallout from the whistleblower complaint and impeachment inquiry launched this week. Democrats are planning to send out even more subpoenas next week seeking records related to the president, Rudy Giuliani and Ukraine's government. The whistleblower claims Giuliani, who is the president's personal lawyer, led the efforts to try to get Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden and his son. Giuliani spoke today about possibly testifying before Congress. Would I like to testify and tell my story? Sure. I've been telling it all the time. In fact, you know my story. There's nothing I can tell them that you can't read online. From the very beginning, I've been totally transparent about this. The president's campaign is also doubling down on unsubstantiated accusations that Biden pressured Ukraine to fire its prosecutor, to protect his son, who served on the board of a Ukrainian gas company. There is no evidence of, wrong, of wrongdoing by either Biden at this point. 
All right, back here at home, neighbors in North Portland are fighting to save the Columbia pool. The city says it needs extensive and expensive repairs, and it isn't bringing in enough money. Portland Parks and Rec's budget is also dealing with major cuts coming down the pipeline, so they plan to close the pool next summer. Today, several neighborhood groups held a free concert called Park and Palooza to try and drum up support to keep their beloved pool open. It's just, um, it's been a life-giving support. And I don't think you think of a pool that way. But that's what this pool is. We should note Portland Parks and Rec is exploring the possibility of a full-service aquatic center at the nearby Charles Jordan Community Center, but nothing is certain yet. And today we reached out to Commissioner Nick Fish's office, who oversees the Bureau of Parks and Rec, but we haven't yet heard back.